Paul Gaston, Mary Gaston, Dr. Martin Luther King, and I were walking through the campus. I would say it was maybe 6.30 or 7 in late March, uh, so it was beginning. The sun had set. It wasn't very dark, but certainly getting so. We were approaching the back side of, Newton, of Newcomb Hall, coming from, um, let's say, Thornton Hall area where the School of Engineering was. And up along there is what we call in those days the Old Dorms. So walking toward Newcomb Hall, on our left down the slope would be Emmett Street. So, uh, okay, and the four people walking together and I'm the, the African-American Southern boy, grew in, reared in Richmond, and very fearful of uh, accidents, assassinations, whatever you want to call them. So when the car backfired, I rushed to cover Dr. King. Uh, just inst it was an instinct. It was something that I, I never questioned. It was the only thing I thought to do was to make sure he would not be injured. Because, again, for a, a southern youngster, in those, a young man in those days, uh, King was uh, a person of courage, a ray of light, a, a sense of hope, a purpose, a conviction that uh, we needed greatly. I'm sure by that time, this was again, as you said, March of 1963, he was fully aware, by way of threats, and etc., and his whole preparation, the campaign for Birmingham, had to have been underway by then, that there was a real danger uh, that, uh, to his life that he had to uh, live up to and understand that it was a possibility.